Otis, sorry. Yeah, perfect. So, um, yeah, now it's recording and I've just made Miss Karimi again the host. So I was, I was saying um, our career journey are different. My career journey is definitely different from another one. And this is the opposite of the mindset we are given when we are growing up. You know, most of us, when we are growing up, we are told, go to school, study, maybe medicine, become a doctor, finish school, become a doctor, go to a, a hospital, you know, get a job there, then grow and, and all that. But you'll find in real, in real sense, uh, you will find your journey will not be that way. You will have to go through a lot of things to really uh, what you really desire. So uh, I would say we should have the mindset that your journey is different and don't put so much pressure on yourself trying to become A, B, C, D because the teacher told you that. Um, Ms. Karimi, as the host, you are able to mute people, so you can just mute Yeah, I have done so. Yeah, so we can have yeah, I have a done that. Thank you very much. Now, um, back to our topic today, I'll start with how to write an award-winning CV. <laughs> and uh, there is this quote that I like to say, um, until a potential employer meets you, your CV is the only thing representing you. So make sure you give yourself the best chance of a positive outcome. Mm. We can all agree that um, you've done a lot of applications and out of 20 applications you've done, you have not met all of them, the physical people, but the hiring manager, they, they have met you through your CV. So this is like a CV is something that tells someone about you to raise curiosity in them, in them for them to want to meet you. Now, I'll give an example. Ms. Karimi gave my bio and I know from what she read, most people were now interested to listen to what I have to say. That's specifically my CV for this event. Now, that's the same when it comes to uh, building a professional um, brand or when you're looking for a job, have it in mind that your CV is what the employer meets before they can meet you. Now, you need to make it as attractive as possible so that the person can look at it and be like, oh my God, I need to meet Miss Karimi. I need to meet Joy. I need to meet um, Sir Gideon because of how attractive your CV is. Now, by an attractive CV, I don't mean you go making it colorful with all colors, you know, red, yellow, green, no. <laughs> I mean, you need to um, make the CV stand out by the words, by the outlay, and how you um, arrange everything in the CV. As always, we always recommend people to have it one page. Don't have a CV of five pages and yet you just graduated. You know, it's you, you have to try as much as possible to make it one page. Now, at Financial Wellness Center, we always receive applications from people. And sometimes when I have the chance to view, uh, um, when I have the chance to view some of these CVs, um, automatically I just decline them because it's four pages and the person doesn't even have work experience enough to suit what we are looking for. So make it as precise as possible. Now I'll give us about seven tips on how you can write an award-winning CV. And this one I'm going to give us from a global perspective because um, by the grace of God, I've had the chance to uh, be in different countries. So of course there are various uh, things that operate when it comes to different countries and how they, ask, uh, they expect their CVs to be, but there is something that cuts across 
all the CVs in every country you would be interested in. So if you are writing, I'll start. The, uh, the topic would be, or the subtopic would be how to write an award-winning CV. So the first thing you need to do is to tailor your CV to the job offer. I can see someone saying, uh, please wait, uh, I'll repeat that, how to write an award-winning CV. So the first thing is tailor your CV to the job offer. To be honest, if you're applying, for example, for, a, um, let's say for an accountant position and you're sending a CV about sales, those are two different things. So you need to tailor your CV to the job offer. If you are a graduate, let the people know, I am a graduate or I don't have any work experience, but I have educational uh, knowledge about this um, job, uh, job vacancy. So not under, this is where most people make mistake. One thing they do is they use one CV for all the jobs they apply. So if you find someone applying for a sales and marketing job, they'll use that CV to apply for an accountancy job, to apply for a digital expert job, to apply for you know whatever job you can think of, which is very wrong because every job has its own unique description. You need to tailor your CV to match that. Why am I saying like that? Because when you tailor your CV, you are able to pass through the system. Trust me, HR, personnel don't sit there waiting for your CV. They, they, they have a system that is able to filter so that they can just get people who they are interested in. So for example, we know in our current world, jobs are very limited. Now, if you see a job offer, you can find like a thousand people applying for one job. Do you think a HR expert will sit there to go over 1000 CVs? No. So they introduced a system and this system filters out and just picks the CVs that match what they are looking for. So you need to tailor your CV to the job offer. And that is why you always see every job advert gives you a job description of what they expect you to do and what they are looking for. It's not that these people just want to fill the paper. It's because in another way they are telling you, this is what we're looking for. So you need to have your CV matching this so that you can pass our system and be able to, uh, to land at the desk of uh, HR expert or personnel. Then number two, be concise. I, I, I have already mentioned that earlier. Your CV should be one page. Try as much as possible. Even if you started working at age 10, <laughs> you know, even if you started working at age 10 and maybe now you're 20 or 22, yes, you have maybe 12 years of experience, but ensure you make it into one page. You might be asking, how is that possible? It's very possible. Remember we said you need to tailor your CV for the job offer. Trust me, all the jobs you've done, they cannot be matching that job offer. So you only focus on the jobs you've done that are matching the job offer. For example, maybe you're applying for a sales uh, uh, position and in your experience, you've done an internship as a marketing person, you've done an internship as a sales representative, you've done an internship as a community volunteer, you've done an internship as um, uh, in accounts department, in production. Now, you'll only pick the experiences you've had that are in line with sales. You don't have to put these other experiences that are not in line with sales because the job offer is more sales. of sales. So when you are able to compile that, you'll find that you are able to have a one page CV specifically for that job opportunity. I'm sorry, if you'd like to speak, just raise your hand. We have the emojis on the uh, on the more sent section and um, we can, you know, our moderator will arrange on how you can get a chance. Now we'll go to the third yeah. one. Yeah, 
kindly let's ask our questions in the chat box i believe that's better for now so that we should stop interrupting the our speaker kindly let's chat yes thank you very much miss karimi now we go to the third one exploit your um your usp now what is a usp basically this is whereby um you want to make yourself be competitive so that the hr expert can be interested in you so you have to make sure that um when you have you're sending your application make it competent enough such that a person cannot pass by you i, I don't know if you've ever seen there are you can be walking along the streets but there's an advert you see that will you'll even stand to read it but there's another one you'll see you're not even interested why because the person find out found out a way to capture um, your attention so um and general generally every hr expert takes around 90 seconds to check a cv on average 90 seconds that is like one and a half minutes to just look at a cv so you need to you know make it pop out such that the person will be glued like oh this is something i i you know i need to uh to, I, this is a person i need to meet remember when i started i said before an a potential employer can meet you they will meet your cv so make it competent enough and then um one thing you also need to do under this exploiting your usp always use bullet points as it makes it easy for someone to know what you did for example if in my previous job uh, i was maybe let's say i was maybe a marketing person i would put in bullet in bullet points what i did so maybe i was marketing the product i was in charge of a of a store I'll put it in bullet points so that it can stand out compared to leaving it as a paragraph. Because I've seen CVs of people who send you a CV and they are doing as a paragraph and you get tired of reading it because you feel like it's a story you're about to read, which is not good. So put your what you did, the job description that you did in your previous jobs and internships in, forms, in form of bullets or bullet points. And then this is where, again, we, we look into things like the font. Always use Times New Roman, size 12. That is the one that is always recommended. Be clear, be concise, you know, use good terms. Don't just be a flat person, you know. I worked for company ABCD. I was the sales executive for two years, that's it. No, you, you need to write it in a way that I worked for company ABC. I was the best sales executive. And during my tenure, I was able to raise or increase revenue for the company. You see, those two statements are totally different. I would definitely go for the second one because it's attractive, right? Compared to this other one, we just said I was, you know, I was doing this and that's it. So use words that are, you know, attractive and can make someone want to read what you've written. Then the fourth one is focus on measurables, not traits. We love numbers. Personally, I love numbers. And that is why even if you check the news, they are always giving us numbers. For example, right now with COVID, why do you think they always say 1,000 people are positive, maybe 500 have, have, have recovered? You know, why do they give us numbers? Why don't they say just many people have COVID? few people have recovered because there's power in numbers. So even in your CV, ensure you highlight numbers. Don't just say, uh, I, there's, there's one CV I received and somebody said, I am reliable, I am persuasive. Well, the terms are nice, but prove it. And you can only prove such traits with numbers. You can say, by being reliable, I was able to increase um by being reliable i was able to be to always be on time in my car uh, in my workstation 
which in turn resulted to 95% increase in uh, completion of my tasks. So when I see 95%, I'll be okay. What was this 95% about? I'll be interested. So give metrics, give people things that are measurable, use numbers. With numbers, um, they kind of make somebody be interested in you. Again, don't use numbers negatively. <laughs> you know, some people will say, uh, I, I was uh, the least performing employee. I was always uh, on the bottom five. That is wrong use of numbers. You need to use the numbers appropriately and use it in a way that um, bring out the best in you. So, um, <laughs> so you know, um, you know, uh, with uh, when you focus on measurables, you are able to get the attention, and of course, it makes someone be interested in meeting you physically. So, don't use just traits. Don't say you're persuasive. Make it in numbers. Uh, for example, you can say during my internship as a sales executive in company A, B, and C, I was able to increase sales by ninety percent. Again, if another person comes and tells me, I was during my internship, um, I was able to persuade people to buy. I'll go for the first one because increasing sales by 90%, that is a persuasive person. So I'll go for the first one. Use numbers as much as possible and make it measurable. What you did, measure it in numbers, give percentages if possible. Then um, the fifth one is focus on your wins. You know, we've grown up being told, don't flaunt your wins. Especially in Africa, we believe a lot in witchcraft and all that, which, okay, there is a place for that, but it's important for you to flaunt your wins. I mean, you've worked hard, you've achieved this. You've been a leader in your school. Maybe you've, been, you've even been a prefect in high school. That is something you need to flaunt it. You're a class representative, talk about it. You are a moderator in a group on Facebook with 1,000 people, flaunt it. So say your wins, even in your CV. Don't just think like, okay, I'll say it when I, when I go to the interview, no. Remember the CV is what gets you through the door. So you need to say much about your wins and put them in a, you know, in a, in a, in a fancy and, and, you know, fancy way. For example, um, uh, you know, every industry is highly competitive and we cannot uh, overlook the fact that jobs are limited as of now and everyone is looking for an opportunity. So you need to, uh, as a company or most organization will always look for employees who can increase their performance because that leads to better revenue. So that is why you need to say much about your wins. I have an example here where you can say, um, uh, you know, before I can give the example, let me just say you need to take time to craft a few lines about past achievements that led to a positive output, both in the company performance and revenue. Now, this should focus on the part you played in the initiative, the part you played. For example, maybe you happened to have an, in, an internship or just a, a small job, you know, these holiday jobs, Let's say in Safaricom. And then we read in the news, Safaricom has made profits. Then you, you go and write in your CV, I worked in Safaricom and we made profits for the year. Okay. As a recruiter, I'll ask, what was your role in Safaricom making profits? That is where you have to say how you made it win. Maybe you could say, um, during my tenure in Safaricom, as a dedicated staff, I was able to increase my revenue or my, my I, fin I used to finish my task on time, which led to uh, the company being able to make maybe 90% profits from the previous year. So you see, I'm able to see what you did, not just what the company has achieved, but I'm able to see, okay, she or he participated in the success of this company. So flaunt your wins as much as possible. You can even say, for example, I, I, if you're a student leader in your campus or you're a, you're a school, uh, you're a class representative, 
you can say during my tenure as a class representative for our, you know, our, our coursework, I was able to ensure 90% of the students are able to deliver assignments on time. This led to making it easy for our lecturers to mark our work and update our, uh, our results. So you see, um, I've already seen, okay, this person as a class representative, he or she was able to do this. So you are telling me your wins in a way that is making me see not just the bigger picture, but what you did. Then the sixth one is identify and analyze requirements and respond like for like. You know, <laughs> we are only saying on Facebook, give me a like. On YouTube, you're always telling people, give us a thumbs up, like for like, you get? Even I saw on Instagram, sometimes people tell you, follow for follow. Now, depending on the role advertised, certain requirements can take precedence or they can need a proven track record of delivering results within a particular industry or a certain specific qualification. Now, what you do when it comes to, uh, to this, identifying and analyzing their requirements, you need to look at the job description. Now, if the job description, they say, we need someone who has, let's say, who is a CPAK, has a bachelor's in e-commerce, has at least one year of experience or zero experience. And you see like, okay, I don't have a CPAK. Uh, I just graduated with a bachelor of commerce. And I have six months of experience and they need one, one year experience. What will I do? I will focus on the, uh, uh, on the degree that I have. And I will use it to make them know that I, out of the three requirements that you need, I have one and I have the potential to deliver. So you will match your CV in such a way that puts you in a, in a situation whereby they will be able to see, okay, this person doesn't have one year experience, doesn't have a CPAK, but with this bachelor, bachelor's degree, he or she can be able to deliver. And depending on how you put yourself, there are companies that are willing to support you grow. They can even decide, okay, we'll take you in and we will pay for your CPA. Personally, I experienced that when, um, when I was just, when, when I was, um, when I finished high school and I went for, you know, these jobs you do as you wait for you to join campus. So I, what did I have? I just, I had just completed high school. I didn't, we had not received the results yet. So I, all I had was my uh, report cards for the high school years. That is what I presented. And I told the employer that, um, I'm interested in accounts, I want to learn. And this is what I have from high school and in high school, I loved business. This is how I performed, I, I did the best. And this employer was so intrigued by my potential that she decided to sponsor me to do CPA while working in her organization. Yet what they had advised, I, advertised was they needed someone who had CPA, they needed someone who had a bachelor's degree, but here I was just in high school uh, report cards. So you need to know how you can match what the employer wants with what you have. Even if it's not directly relational, make it appear like you have the interest or the potential to meet what they desire. Again, most of the jobs you are trained to do them. So what they, the most, of, most of the people will always look into is, is this person ready to learn? Is this person having that potential? So don't kill yourself trying to acquire 50 degrees just to get one job, but you have to show you have the potential and you're passionate about that. Then the, the, the other one is know what else to include and exclude. Not everything should appear in your CV. I've seen some people who put, oh, my hobby, hobbies, traveling, cooking, dancing, networking. And honestly, if you're applying for an accounts position, <laughs> the, the HR might not be interested in your dancing skills. 
right? The, the HR might not be interested in your cooking skills. So this person will be interested in accounting stuff. So you need to say maybe your, your hobby is something to do with you know numbers, playing chess. That will be make the the the, um, the expert the HR expert to think twice about you. But you don't have to put so many things, hobby, visiting friends. It's unnecessary. Remember, we are trying to put our CV to be one page. Most of the time I usually say, unless it's a requirement, don't focus on that. I know there are jobs that that really uh, need you to maybe say your hobby. For example, if you're going to apply for a tours consultant job, one of the hobbies that they need you need to portray is that you are, um, uh, how do you call these people who like going everywhere? Maybe you like mountain climbing, you're a hiker. You can say that as your hobby. And ensure it is, don't just say because you want the job. Ensure it is, because sometimes I've seen people who put certain hobbies which are not, they don't have even an idea. So during the interview, you ask them, I saw you, you, you said your hobby is mountain climbing. Which mountain have you ever climbed? And then they are zero. They're like, mountain? So ensure whatever you put in your hobby is in line with the job you're applying. <laughs> and actually, it's what you do. If it's not something you do, just don't <laughs> enjoy it. Class, class, and you and I know you have an exam. So, who's a good one? Exam. Well, no, just thank you very much. We, 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 we can hear you are doing an exam. <laughs> then, the last one is referees. Referees, these are the people who will be contacted to say what they know about you. Now, this is a two way sword. You can include them towards the end of your of your CV, include a section of referees towards the end, or you can just put a note that um, a note that says referees are available on request. Be very careful when you're putting referees on your CV because some referees you put them there, and when an employer calls them, they're like, oh, I don't know such a person, or they'll talk bad about you. They'd be like, ah, that lady, she used to come late during her internship. She used to have an, an attitude. And that is how you lose the job. You don't even get an interview, yet you your CV qualified all other parts, but the referee lets you down. So if you're going to put anyone as your referee, let them know that you use, you use them as your referee. Miss um, Karime, can you please mute Billian, Bill Bryan, sorry. Thank you. So when you put your referee, you know, an employer will require at least two references before making an offer. They will call. Personally, from the CVs that I've received from my company, I do call. I call the references and I ask them, ah, I, how do you know this person? Have you ever worked with the person? How was he or she? And some refer referees are very good. They will tell you so many amazing things that you get interested in even hiring the person like now, now. While others, they'll be like, I don't know such a person. So if you're going to use someone as your referee, number one, let them know you're using them. Number two, let them know that you've given out their contacts. It's Sometimes it's very heartbreaking when you've passed everything in the CV and even sometimes the interview, then when they call your reference or referee, the referee says, this is a wrong number. How did you get my number? Don't call me. And that is how you might end up not getting a job, especially if the HR personnel is not considerate. So let your references know that you're using them and put people you know they can speak well of you. If you did an internship or you did a job somewhere and you fought with the manager, then that is not a good person to include as your referee. He or she might ruin your, your, your chance. And then finally is be factual. A CV is a statement of facts and you must be able to stand behind every claim. Now, be, due to the desperation of people looking for jobs, I've seen people who lie in their CV and then when you get to interview them, you find that it's just a lie. They cannot even deliver what they say. So say the truth. I always say, if a job is yours, 
give it your best you will get it if it's not yours don't you don't have to lie and that is why this is what has brought about the idea of people saying we have half baked graduates the thing is there are some people a number of people or a few people who lie in their CVs as graduates and then when they get to do the work they cannot deliver so always say the truth and facts that you can you can um, you can back them up also make sure there are no discrepancies don't say you worked for company abc and then when we call that company to ask if they know anything about you they are not even aware of such a person so always tell the truth and for example what uh, what sometimes happens is maybe you had a job and then you, you you lost it or you left the job or the internship then you had to stay like two years and then before getting another job just explain in the cv because now your cv will have a, a, a gap you worked from 2011 to 2013 then you didn't get a job for two years then the next job you got was maybe in 2017 now your cv will have a gap because someone will wonder okay this person worked 2012, 2013. Then the next time I'm seeing another job is 2017. What happened in between? Just in, uh, indicate was not working, or maybe you you know you were focusing on personal things, or you took a sabbatical leave. You just highlight that to close the idea where the the, the employer will be thinking. No, what what was happening in between this? And you know, some people might decide to fill in the gaps wrongly. And lastly, I know we are a generation who like doing things fast and you know, writing things in short forms. And if you are here listening to me and you still write to people in short forms, K, Oak, <laughs> you know, and you, you you write these kind of short forms like. Hmm? Uh, straight. You you instead of writing the word straight, you write S T R eight. You know those kind of things. Uh, if you still write in X X, so so you know those kind of things. I think it's time to check on that. Um, because most employers will look into if there is a typo in your CV, typing error. You've You've said things that are even using past tense where you need to use present tense, it can lose, uh, make the opportunity not come to you, or the person might get tired. Yes, so avoid short forms as much as possible, as well as ensure you proofread your CV. Don't just write very quickly, then send it. Proofread it, try to look if everything is matching perfectly. Trust me, I can tell you for free. Um, I've had the chance to, you know, interact with um, many HR personnel, and most of them tell you when they read something and they see like the grammar is just on another, like it's very terrible. They get tired and they automatically send it to junk or trash it. So we don't want to create any opportunity where you miss the interview. We want you to get the interview. So. Proofread your work as much as possible, avoid short forms, and as well as um, send your CV to a friend and ask them, I want to send this CV, can you proofread it for me? Because sometimes, because you've been typing too much, you may not be able to see some mistakes. So have a friend. Uh, we always say, don't do the job search journey alone. Have someone who can be proofreading for you. So until there, I believe we can write an award-winning CV. Give me a thumbs up. There, there are emojis on the right side. As well as, uh, please keep your questions coming. I'll, I'll definitely try my best to answer as many as possible. Now we go to the next section. Today I will only do two sections due to time limitation. Um, I believe we, Rogers and the organizing team will arrange maybe some another day we can do, you know, um, 
the interview part, but today we are just focusing on helping you get in the door, <laughs> in, the, in the company door. And as I said, it's your CV that will get you in the door. So we'll just focus on that. Now we'll go to cover letter. So you've seen a job offer, you've seen what uh, they are looking for, you are matching it, and you know you 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 feel like I'm the guy for this job. You've written your CV, it's one page or maximum two page. Honestly, if it's a two page, you really need to have at least 10 years of experience. And that is solid experience, not just uh, these jobs you do for two months, you go to another one for one month, no. It has to really be something. But if you're just a graduate, honestly, one page is enough for you. Um, now that your CV is one page, it's attractive. You've said how you, you know, you've flaunted your wins. You have matched it to what they are looking for. Now it's time to write a cover letter. Now, here I will highlight most people what they do. They just send the CV and they don't send a cover letter. Trust me, cover letter is like the makeup of your job search. You know, we all do makeup or most, we actually we all do makeup. When you apply, even if you apply a remis or Vaseline, it's different from when you don't apply anything on your face, right? So we apply makeup to groom ourselves or to enhance our looks. That doesn't mean our looks are bad, but we are enhancing it. And that is the same thing with cover letter. A cover letter is a makeup for your CV. So always ensure whichever job you apply to, attach a cover letter. Don't be in a rush. And that's, you know, I always say you'd rather apply for three jobs in one day, but apply correctly, such that out of the three jobs, you will at least get one interview rather than applying for 100 jobs, and then you don't get even one interview because you're just throwing your CV, throwing, throwing, throwing everywhere, one CV for 20 type of jobs, no. So you'd rather take your time, look at the job, take your time and write a nice CV as well as a cover letter. Now, you need to write a cover letter that will stand out. Remember that is your makeup, so you want to attract this, people to read your, this employer to read your CV. So there are, I think there are like, uh, I'll, I'll share like seven tips again on how to write a cover letter that will stand out. And this one I'll tell you from my own uh, experience uh, as an employer, um, when someone sends me, sends a cover letter to our email, and it's sent over to me, I read it. I usually read it and I'm like, hmm, this cover letter is nice. Let me check at the CV. But if I find the cover letter is just something not even interesting, I won't even think about it. I won't even think about looking at the CV. So always write as an, a cover letter that will stand out. And some ways of doing that is number one, don't just rehearse your CV. There are people who they copy paste everything that is in the CV and they put it in the cover letter. So what's the use? You need to make sure that your cover letter highlights the things that are not in the CV, but they are in the in the job description. For example, I say in the CV in your CV you need to include metrics or numbers. Now, instead of using traits. So in a CV, instead of saying I am persuasive, you can say I was able to increase customers for this company by 90%. Now in cover letter, you'll say I am persuasive because I was able to increase customers for this company. So you see, you've highlighted something that you could not be able to highlight it in the CV, but it's now coming to your cover letter. There are things you can, I have a checklist here for your cover letter. Uh, your cover letter should draw attention to specific skills and experiences that make you an ideal candidate. Specific skills. If they are looking for someone who can type 1000 words per minute, 
your cover letter should say that I'm a fast typer. I can type 1,000 words per minute. So it, your cover letter should have that specific skill that they are looking for. Honestly, if they are looking for someone who can type faster, I don't see why you should say you are good at singing in your cover letter. Like, how is that going to make uh, align with that job? So highlight the skills that are, they are looking for in your cover letter. Then you need to also mention other relevant skills your resume may not illustrate. That is why I said like you're persuasive, you are a people's person. Again, explain why you would love to have the job in question. Honestly, in your CV, you cannot say why you want the job. Your CV just highlights who you are, but it's the cover letter that tells the employer why you need that job. You can say being a good, being the best student in my class, I believe I'll be able to bring the, theoretic, the theoretical knowledge I have learned in school to your organization um, and be able to uh, do that. Just a minute, I check why my bell rang, sorry. As we wait for the whole uh, speaker, sorry, I hope you are learning a lot. I can see I uh, have questions on the chat section. Keep them coming. I uh, shall give uh, a speaker answer. I'm noting the question now. So, and I hope the question on the two page CV, I uh, hope it has been tackled. Now, remaining for uh, is your name necessary on the CV? How many sections should we have? And the meaning of the USP someone has asked. So keep your questions coming. I'm noting them down kindly. And I hope everyone is on track. Tunaskizana kweli? Yes. Yes, tunaskiza. At least I would like some of us to say what they have learned so far. Personally, I've learned that CVs are different uh, depending on the job that you are. Okay, our speaker is here. Kindly proceed. Thank you very much. Apologies for that. Um, there was someone ringing my doorbell. I had to check. Anyway, as I was saying, your cover letter needs to stand out. The first thing you need, don't rehearse what is in your CV. Don't copy paste what is in your CV to your cover letter. And this you can only do by um, highlighting specific skills that make you an ideal candidate. You will also um, mention other relevant skills that are not in your resume. And again, you in your cover letter, you need to say why, why should yeah. they employ you? This is where you get the chance to, you know, uh, say why you are fit for the job. And finally, um, it's in the cover letter that you show you done your research about the company and its mission and leadership. How do you do this? Um, you you might you might write like, um, for example, the mission of the company is to inspire and transform people financially. So you can say. Um, having um no like you can say no having noticed that your company's mission is to transform people financially i believe as a finance graduate i'll be able to bring in my skills that will help achieve this mission you've, you you see you've already made that person think okay this person knows our mission and can be able to help us deliver it then the second thing you need to do to make your cover letter stand out is you need to tailor your cover letter to a specific job. There is no one size fits all cover letter for all jobs. Every job is different and you'll have to write different cover letters for every job. 
Now, this is where I say you'd rather apply for three jobs in a day and make them customized than applying for a hundred jobs and you're sending the same CV without even looking at anything and the same cover letter. And that is how most people get frustrated. Um, I remember th th there was a time I was looking for a job and when I noticed this tip, I decided I'll just be focusing on few jobs and I make it so customized. And trust me, within two weeks, I, I had a lot of interviews lined up. So this is something that works. You need to tailor your cover letter and CV to meet um, to a specific job. Don't send one size fits all kind of CV and uh, cover letter. Then still in the cover letter, you need to be proud of your past accomplishments. You know, companies will always be confident of employees who love their work. So don't say, okay, I did this job in the county government just because I didn't have anything else to do. No, you need to say, say things that make you appear or be um, competent enough for someone to be interested in you. Then um, keep it brief. Don't, again, being brief is the secret source. <laughs> Don't write a cover letter that is like a storybook or a biography, you know? Make it as brief as possible. Just ensure that whatever you're including in the cover letter is not a copy paste in the resume, as well as it's not too long, such that by the time someone's fin someone finishes reading it, they even forget what you said in the first paragraph. Usually it's recommended to at least have three to four paragraphs, like the introduction, why you think you're fit for the job and the skills you're bringing, um, how they can contact you, and that's it. So make it as brief as much as you can. Remember, with the, with the digital transformation we are having, most people don't have a, a high attention span. Then always ensure you address the hiring manager personally. This is something that it can be done and sometimes it cannot be done. Number one, it can be done if you know the person who is, who is the hiring manager in that company. Maybe if a friend told you, okay, there's a position in this company, you can ask what's the name of the hiring manager so that you can write dear, dear ABC, like that. But if you do not know, just write dear sir or madam. But if you can get the name, trust me, there's something that comes when I see dear Sheila. Oh, I'm like, okay, let me read this. This person knows my name as compared to dear madam. So if you can get the name, well and good, but if you cannot get the name, just use, you know, sir or madam. Then, if you'll forget everything I've said, don't forget this. Use keywords from the job description. Now, remember when I started, I said, most companies use a filter method to filter CVs. You see, like if I advertise for one job, I get a thousand applica applicants. What I will do, I'll have to use a system that can filter so that I can only get people who match what I want. Now, how do they get people who match what they want? It, the system uh, runs to check the keywords. So if in my job description, I've said, I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for uh, um, an ambitious, passionate sales executive, if your CV has passionate, has the word passionate, has the word ambitious, has the word sales, chances are high it will come through the system. But if it doesn't have any word like passionate, ambitious, or anything, then the CV will be automatically rejected. And that is how you find so many people get a lot of rejections, automatic rejections. It's not because someone viewed your, your CV, but it's because the system did not find any keyword in your CV that matches what the employer is looking for. So again, look at the job description, then use, especially if you see in a job description, a certain word is repeated, uh, uh, is repeated uh, a lot of times, then that means that is a keyword. So if in every line you see sales, 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 then use, ensure your CV and cover letter had the word sales at least 
twice or thrice. If you see the word numbers, 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 ensure you have number the word numbers in your CV as well as your cover letter. Remember, we are trying to get you inside the door of the company. So use keywords that appear in the job description to appear in your CV and cover letter. There is this application that, uh, no, it's a website that we used, uh, we used to use, I can't, if I remember the name I'll share with Rogers, it's a good one where you just um, key in the job description of the job you want, and then you attach your CV. Then that website runs it and tells you these are the, uh, the keywords the employer is looking for, and your CV only matches it maybe by 50%. So that tells you chances are high you'll not be selected. So learn to find out how to, you know, make the keywords from the job description appear in your CV and cover letter. And then um, finally, again, proofread your cover letter. Don't just send something that has a lot of typo and uh, you know a lot of grammatical error. You are using past tense where you need present tense. You're using short forms. You are, you know, the font is not matching. Ensure you proofread your cover letter as much as possible. So this brings me to the end of today's presentation. I think I've taken exactly one hour. Um, if you have any question, I know we have, there's so much we can talk about. And um, I'll just touch base on uh, presentation, professional documents presentation. Now this one, um, professional documents, Ensure your documents are always sent in PDF format. Why? Because number one, it builds your 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 brand. Like the person who will receive it will see like, okay, this person is very serious. They cannot. Um, they they are aware of how sensitive their documents are. So always send them in PDF format, including the CV and the cover letter. Don't send, send them in Word, because if you send something in Word, someone can edit it. But if you send it in, in PDF format, there's a way um, it, it kind of portrays a certain form of security and responsibility on your side, then ensure um, whatever you send is neat and uh, you can match it. I've, I have seen instances where somebody sends a certificate and then they cannot, uh, they cannot defend how they got this certificate. So be very neat and be able to back up what you send. And then when you are presenting, or if someone calls you to, you know, sometimes a recruiter can call you and tell you, okay, can you take me through your CV? Always know what you wrote. So present it in such a way that will be compelling. And then finally, um, if you happen to get to the interview, either on phone, on video, or physically, please look good. Look, dress according to the job. For example, if you're going to do, um, let's say you're going to do, um, uh, 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 let's say a tours and consultant job whereby you'll be outdoor taking people for tours. And then um, on the, on, when you go for the interview, you go dressed up like someone who is a doctor, you know? So, so dress according to that job. The same applies if you're going to apply for an office job. Don't show up in your pajamas or sneakers or, or, or shorts, no, uh, be presentable. Look like what you have said in the CV. How you appear, actually your appearance matters a lot. Your CV can be excellent, your, your cover letter excellent, but when someone is meeting you on video, oh my God, they see a whole different person. So dress up for the job, look presentable. And lastly, don't forget to use the, I always call them the powerful words, which is one, please, thank you, 
welcome, greeting. So, you know, don't just, if you are, if it's a physical interview, don't just get there and sit and wait for them. You need to, you know, come in, say hello. And, you know, they, they'll ask you to sit down and, you know, you know, you, you need to tell them, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Please, may you repeat your question? You know, be, make them to be your, your, your handbook kind of words. Those are powerful words and they are, you know, they portray how good you are in communicating. Just because you got the interview doesn't mean you got the job. So check on how you, your tone, how you speak your attitude some people you know they can say thank you but they are they are sneering thank you no <laughs> you know you need to like let your expression really mean what you are saying don't just say it because you you are told by sheila to say it so that brings me to the end of today's presentation if you have any questions i welcome uh you to the platform i give the audience back to miss karimi thank you yeah, thank you so much, Sheila Mboga. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. I have learned a lot, I personally, and uh, a few questions have been posted on the chat. There is one uh, asking uh, that some different platforms, uh, they encourage people to have two page CVs. Uh, that is one. The second one, uh, one of us has asked uh, you kindly expound on the initials, the meaning of USP. That is two. And another one asked, is your name necessary on the CV? Uh, that is three. And another one is, how many sections should we have on a CV? So um, I'll start with what does USP mean? So your, a USP is um, it's a unique combination of skills, strengths, and experiences and education. So it's a combination that no one else has. So for example, let me just give us an example. Um, your, your USP, as I said, it's like a value proposition. It is a, actually the full word is unique selling proposition. That is USP. So you could say like, for example, um, you could say something that makes you stand out um, in your CV. And this is where you can say, for example, having grown my market, my market share by 50% in the last two years, I developed a system, a systematic approach to business development that works and can affect your company in a few months. That is different from someone who will say, I worked for a company and I was able to develop the market. Then what? So that is like your unique selling point. What is your unique selling proposition? Why should I take you and yet I have two candidates who've done the same degree. So you, you need to have something that makes you stand out. And then um, about MK, uh, the, the short forms, I think. I think that's the question about short forms. Ms. Karimi, come to my help. What did you say about yeah. short forms? Yeah, the short form someone asked about the meaning of USP and uh, you have uh, clearly stated it. Uh, thank you so much for that. The other question is, is your name necessary on the CV? Yes, it is. It's very, very necessary. There are three things or four things that need to appear in your CV. Number one, your name, very bold. Otherwise, how will they address you? uh of course they got you know your name you when you're writing a cv it's not like you're chatting up someone you're trying to vibe or you know katia you can't say hi hi so and so you need to make your name appear in the on, on the cv boldly like me i'll use my name sheila mboga then your contact your mobile number 
and I usually say always start it with your country code, especially if you're looking to work overseas, ensure you have a, you put your country code in your mobile number. So if it's Kenya plus 254, then the number, your email address is very, very important. But you don't need to put your marital status. That's, that's unnecessary. Honestly, that's so unnecessary. You don't need to put your race and all that, but your name, your mobile number and your con your email address. Those are very, very important. And sometimes you can add your PO box if you expect them to reach out to you via mail. And then what else did that person ask? Maybe we can do the question one by one. I think I'm forgetting most of the things you are. Yeah. Know. There's another question uh, Honest asked uh, about uh, if you can kindly show us an example of a CV because uh, some of us are saying on the chat that they have six page CVs, others two page. No, if you can uh, at least give us a, an example, that is. Okay, let me see if I have my CV on email address and I'll be able to share a screen. <clears throat> Now, again, depending with the country you are um, you are applying, there are countries where you need to attach your photo on the CV. And there are some that you need to state your visa status, especially if you are in another country. For example, if you are applying for a job in, let's say in Tanzania, you are not a, a native Tanzanian. So definitely you need to state the, the status of your of your CV, of your visa. Now, um, where is my I think I used to have a CV. <laughs> Let me see. We can go to the next question as I try to look for this CV. I can so that I can share here. Yeah, allow me to go uh, through the chat part. Someone has asked about uh, is it possible to write the date of birth? Um, sometimes and sometimes no. I, I don't see the need for that unless the person asks you, because I'm trying to imagine, um, you know, the CV, unless they've mentioned in the job description, looking for, for, uh, for a person who is between this age group, then you can put it there. But if they've not asked, I don't see why I should add my age, you know. What is key is your, your contact details. But if the job description mentions, because I've seen jobs that say we need maybe a, a person who is between the age of 18 and 18 to 30, then in that case, you need to ensure your CV has your age so that you can pass the system. It will be one of the key words actually. So where is my CV? Oh God. <laughs> But honestly, writing a CV to be one page is very, very easy. I think I got it. I will have to join with another account. So we can go to the next question, Miss uh, Karimi. Yeah, thank you so much. And I'd like to request uh, if you have any question, I kindly ask, Idris has requested to ask a question personally by himself. So kindly, Idris, I give you the platform. Okay, hello. So, yes. okay, the point, there is a point here where most of us are used to writing a CV. We have this one CV of ours. When we gain experience, we add experience on top of experience. Like, you know, your skills never change, your mm -hmm. hobbies never change, and your personal contacts, they also never change. So if you gain new experience, you just add experience on top of experience. You can have experience on, for example, marketing, accounting department, and even an outside, an outside world, which is not business and everything. You can gain lots of experience. So, but... Due to the presentation I'm getting here, the knowledge I have found here, you have said that if you are writing a CV, you should match the CV using the descriptions of the job given. So it means this CV of mine, which I was like updating it, 
I will have to filter it out and then make it make it look like the job de description. So it means I will not write these other experiences I have. I will also write the experience I have about the job. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, so what I've just shared now is my one page CV. I'm trying to, you know, trying to. I think you, you can all see it. Where is it? So this is my one page CV well, so far. And as you can see, um, I've actually put, this is this was for a job I was, I was uh, applying for. And I'm trying to make it uh, to be able to go down. Yeah. Uh, um, speaker, kindly reshare the screen uh, on my side. Me potea. Okay. So this is my one page CV. My name is on top there. My contact details are there. Um, the job experience that I've had that were matching the job I was applying for. So in this case, the job I was applying for, I only found out that I only have two experiences that are matching it. So I only put two job experiences. Then I went to the skills that I have that are matching the that are matching that job. Then I went to education. For education, you have to put their most recent. You don't need to start putting your primary, your kindergarten, your primary, you don't need that. You need to put the recent one. As at that time, that was my reason. And then uh, I added technical skills that were matching what I was looking for. And the language, that is it. That's a CV that I've, and this CV already is showing around almost five years of experience. And that is it. So you see, and um, this is someone who has, I already have a work experience. So if you, it's very easy to make your CV to be one page. If you can see, I've also used uh, bullet points to highlight what I was doing. It's not just a paragraph. I've also added the, the company name and the location and the, the, the job I was doing. Then I went to the years and up to what time. And yeah, that's it. So for the person who was asking about as a uh, one page CV, this is what I have for a job I, I had applied for some time back. So I'll stop sharing the screen. Then the one who has asked, you, you, you keep adding all the experiences you get. The thing is, as I said, match the experience, the experience you put in your CV, let it match. Um, for this CV, I didn't put my my references because in the cover letter I had stated that uh, I can provide references upon request. Because not every referee would want their numbers to be dished out or their email address to be dished out to everyone out there. So I in my you can actually add it even in your cover letter that you. Um, your referees can be provided upon request just for security purposes and privacy concerns. And then for that person who just asked about they keep on adding their experiences, I think it's wise to they look at the experiences you have and the job you're applying for. If they are matching, then find a way that you will reduce them for example, if you have experience in two different companies, but you are doing the same thing, 
then I don't see why you need to write the job description you did in company A, then copy paste the same job description in company B. So if I was, um, if I was a marketing executive in company A and I went to company B to be a marketing executive as well, then what I will do is I will highlight the things that stood out for me in company A and the things that stood out for company B so that the person doesn't be, the, the employer doesn't find like I'm just copy pasting things. And um, what's the other question? Yeah, uh, there's one question. How many sections should we have on a CV? Um, I'll give the example of my the CV that I just shared. I had like how many sections? I had the first section is your details, your names, your, your contact details. Then the second one is your experience. Then the third one is your skills. Then the fourth one is your education. And then the other one should be the language or technical skills or referees, depending with the job. So you can actually avoid the technical skills part by adding it in the skills. And then you can go to the referees. So basically it should be five or like three because you, your contact details, your experience, your skills and achievements, as well as your education, just those. Remember we are putting it into one page and we want it to be standing out as much as possible. Then there's someone who's asked me in private, mention your wings or flaunt your wings, please elaborate this statement. I mean, mention your wings. I, I believe we, we, we are all Kenyans here. I'll use it so I use Swahili. Taja vitu zenyo meshinda. Like mention your achievements. What are what have you won when you are in that company? If, for example, during your work in a given company, you are <clears throat> yes, your wins. You are the best employee, or maybe you are the employee who was always uh, able to take in extra work. You can mention that as your win. Thank you so much, uh, uh, mentor for today. I would like to ask if, are there any more questions? Kindly, I give you uh, one minute, anyone with a question. We are just about to conclude uh, because of time. Any more questions? I'm giving you one minute. Okay, I can see that all of us are contented with uh, Sheila Mboga. I'm highly humbled uh, for the mentorship today. At least ni mejua vitu mingi. Sita peleka sivi yangu kila maali. Yeah, and I would like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome Rogers to say something. Rogers, kindly. Okay, thank you, thank you, um, Miss Karimi. Uh, it has been a wonderful chance, a wonderful coaching program. Uh, I hope we'll be having more of this, uh, Madam Sheila Boga. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you very well, um, Rogers. Um, thank you for taking your 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 time at uh, coach us we really appreciate that um i i was probably thinking of this um and i think i shared with you on whatsapp that uh we can come up with something maybe a, a coach a coaching uh, coaching sessions uh which are more than this one so that uh at the end of the coaching sessions 
we can get a certificate. Actually, the University of Nairobi and Actors Club can uh, make design something up and present it to the uh, to the to the, to the uh, attendees of the of the program. Uh, what do you think of that? Uh, you can share it. Then we can uh, uh, the participants can get to know the way forward. Sure, um, Rogers, thank you so much for bringing such a great idea up. Um, I would gladly say yes, it's uh, I'm all in to support others. And um, this is something we can help one another because honestly, it gives me joy when I share such insights and then somebody gets a job. It's just something that I feel very uh, good about. And you know, the more we can do these sessions, we can even now look into how you can get a job abroad, how you can, you know, get to find opportunities. I mean, there's so much people don't know, yet they can benefit from that. And about the certificate, that would be amazing. So that, you know, um, I think having a certificate is something that we all would want to uh, have it in our portfolio. Okay, great. Um, uh, members, you've heard what um, Madam Sheila Mboga said, and I hope it helps you. And uh, thank you very much for making time tonight. I know some of you are going to pick up, and uh, you took your time to listen to Sheila. You can check Shayla's socials. Kindly, uh, Shayla, paste them on the chats. Yeah, just a minute, I send them. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can check Shayla's socials. You can comment on her work. She's really doing some good work. For those who came in late, you can get the, uh, the recording later on. You can also uh, visit Shayla's YouTube channel. I think you, it was live, right? Currently, no, but um, I'm going to upload it once uh, Zoom sends the recording. Okay. I'll just upload um, the whole video because it's recorded. So yes, people will be able to watch it later on. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Remember also to subscribe to her YouTube channel. She has some very good uh, content. If you are venturing into uh, entrepreneurship, those people who are like me, um, you can still get to um, Entrepreneurs Academy that is on Facebook. Also, you can uh, chat with uh, uh, Sheila. You can get her from the socials and you can get to get the coaching that you need. Uh, Thank you very much and have a nice uh, evening. Good evening or night. Yeah. Good night. Thank you so much, Rogers. Uh, a lot of people are really appreciating our today's uh, program. And yeah, thank you, Sheila, uh, Madam Sheila. I really appreciate uh, the training for today. And uh, I have learned a lot, and I believe uh, the members who can get what I'm saying, uh, we have all learned a lot from you. And finally, uh, without further ado, Excuse me, I would like uh, kindly, Rogers. Yes, I can see one of our alumni, alumnus, uh, the Nectar's Club of the University of Nairobi, Madam Margaret Achai, you can say hi. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Rogers. And uh, I really appreciate the, the lessons for today. I came late, I hope I didn't, ma I didn't miss a lot. And I'm eagerly waiting for the recording so that I can keep the pace. Thank you. You're welcome back to you, Ms. Karima. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, like, uh, Magdalene has said, thank you, Sheila and the organizers. It has been a great learning opportunity. Uh, we appreciate you, Magdalene, for being with us. And yeah, I appreciate. Personally, it's my first time <laughs> moderating. 
actually and it's been a great experience for me and also speaking to madam Sheila the being a founder a new founder in an organization at the University of Nairobi that is University of Nairobi debate association uh, and uh, I have really I'm um, yet to learn a lot from you yeah and uh, I'd like to request one of us to close with a word of prayer kindly uh, perhaps uh, Sarojas, please do close for us with a word of prayer. Or Magdalene, Magdalene Munanga, kindly, Madam Magdalene, close for us with a word of prayer, kindly. Since we started with a man, I believe it's a lady to pray. Magdalene, kindly. Okay, let me pray. Hello. Uh, Magdalene has called... So let me pray, uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come unto your presence at this uh, time, Father. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for uh, your love that you have shown unto us. Thank you for this day. The event has been successful, Father. Our speaker, may you be with her, guide her through as she uh, uh, gets more wisdom to be able to coach us. Father, uh, our participants are still... Um, eagerly waiting for your love and the love that you have shown them they are thankful father i pray we short prayer that may you be with us in jesus name i pray amen loving uh, just a minute uh, lovington miles has something to say please do so before i end the meeting Lavington, I believe I'm pronouncing the name the correct way. Lavington Miles, kindly. We are waiting for you, Miles. Okay, uh, at this juncture, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for participating. Madam Sheila, thank you so much. Uh, God bless you a lot, and I believe we shall have more interactions. Yeah, I would like to request all of us to live at our own pleasure. Or I can just end the meeting, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, let me do so, please, because I'm seeing people, but they are they still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can end the meeting. Thank you so much. I would love to connect with you, Miss Karimi. Okay, me too. All right.